Daniel is asking, what is the significance of the 144,000 during the tribulation? Thank you. All right. You need an hour for that answer too, <laughs> Tina. <laughs> I, you know what? You'd think so, but um, I thought this was really cool. So thank you, Daniel, so much for asking this because I, Nate, I had an epiphany when I was looking up the answer. So we know that the, the 144,000 are mentioned in two spots um, specifically in the Bible, both in Revelation chapter 7 and Revelation 14, which is very interesting um, because if you know anything about the book of Revelation, it's um, written as a chiasmic um book just kind of like Dan the book of daniel's the same way um everything kind of points towards the center and um obviously the center of revelations you know chapter 12 which is basically the conflict between christ and satan that's the biggest thing and that um christ is gonna win so <laughs> that's that's the the most important thing we need to remember about the book of revelation now when it comes to the hundred forty four thousand and the tribulation it's very interesting that you mention those two things together hundred forty four thousand and tribulation so if you go to the first uh, mentioning of them in revelation chapter 7 and verse 3 um so just it talks about you know um that the there's going to be four angels they're going to, that are holding back the winds of strife. And God says uh, in verse 3, um, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. So this the, the four winds of strife, you know, the great tribulation is, want, is about to break hold on this earth. But God says, do not let that begin. Don't let the tribulation begin until his people, the 144,000, are sealed. So the, the beginning of the tribulation doesn't happen until God's people make that conscious choice that they are going to follow the Lamb whithersoever he goes. That God's people, the last generation of God's holy people who are 100% faithful, that are willing and will make it through the tribulation, are going are sealed. So um, they, br in a sense, they bring the tribulation. Um, God says in, you know, in Matthew or Jesus says in Matthew 24, 14, that this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world as a witness. And then the end shall come. So it's God's people that truly bring about the end of the world because they are setting the world on fire for Christ and they are finishing his work. And so, um, the 140, excuse me, 144,000, you think I could speak today, 144,000 again are mentioned um, in chapter 14. So let's go ahead and go there. Um, actually, really quick, in Revelation um, chapter 7, verses 16 and 17, um, they that just uh, tells you that these people go through the tribulation after they're sealed. So I... I don't know if these people know that they're sealed or not, but God knows that they're sealed. They're his people and they go through the tribulation um, as you see in Revelation 7, uh, 16 and 17 for the lamb, which is in the midst of the, um, once they go through the tribulation, you know that they hunger no more, neither do they have heat. Um, for the lamb, which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them into living fountains of waters and God shall wipe away all tears from their guys, eyes. These people went through a hard time. Definitely, they go through the tribulation. So if anybody says, oh, yeah, you're not ever gonna, you're not gonna go through tribulation, you're gonna be raptured before that. No, that is not true. Um, according to Revelation chapter seven, verses 16 and 17. Now, as far as um, the other significance to the 144,000 as part of the tribulation, if you go to Revelation 14, verse 4, and it speaks about um, the 144,000, and it says, uh, These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins, uh, spiritually speaking. Uh, these are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. So these people are first fruits. Now, the significance of that is very interesting in chapter 14 of Revelation, because um, if you read the chapter, it talks about God's people being the 144,000 and that they have a special message, which is we call the three angels messages that you read about in verses six through 11. And, um, you know, the 
so, and after that, it says in verse 12, and here is the patience of the saints. Here are they who keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. So these people are faithful, absolutely faithful in giving this message and going to all the world and, you know, living out um, not only the obedience to God's law, but having the faith of Jesus, you know, basically they reflect God's character um, or reflect the character of Christ. Now, if you go to the rest of the chapter, later on in the chapter, um, it's kind of interesting. So let's take a look because like I said, these people are first fruits unto God. Now, what is first fruits um, talking about? It's talking about a harvest, right? That's what a first fruit is all about. Whenever um, a, a farmer um, has, you know, a crop, they have the that first fruit is always, you know, that first um, blossom, that first bloom, that first, you know, crop that comes out of his garden. And, um, you know, when the Israelites were, um, you know, they had that first harvest, they were supposed to bring their first fruits, their best. This is the absolute best they could offer to God. Um, so that that's important to, to kind of keep in mind. So, um, Talking about the 144,000 after they, you know, give this message, they're faithful. And um, in verse, excuse me, in verse 13, it says, you know, blessed are those who die from this point forward because um, they can rest from their labors and their works follow them. And then it says in verse 14, and I looked and behold a white cloud and upon the cloud one set like on the son of man having in his head a golden crown and in his and in his hand a sharp sickle a sickle is something you you know use for the harvest it says and another angel came out of the temple crying with a loud voice that sat on the cloud thrust in thy sickle and reap for the time is come for thee to reap for the harvest of the earth is ripe so jesus does not come until god's people are fully ripe until his 144,000 have fully reproduced his character they fully live out the truth of his word um and it says and he that said on the amen to that <laughs> i just want to say amen i think that's such a huge point and i don't want that just fly, fly by and people not catch that so just oh, say it thanks. again <laughs> <laughs> thank you brother <laughs> Yes. And so verse 16, it says, and he that sat on the cloud thrust in a sickle on the earth and the earth was reaped. So God's people are reaped. God's people are taken from the earth. And now it says, and then another angel came out of the temple, which is in heaven. He also having a sharp sickle and another angel came out of the altar, which had um, power over fire and um, basically saying thrust in thy sharp sickle and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth. So these are not God's people. This is the wicked people uh, for her grapes are fully ripe as well. So everybody basically on the earth has come to a point where either they fully believe in God or they fully do not. And that's when Jesus comes is the harvest of the earth is right, uh, ripe and ready for the harvest. And um, which is inter interesting because Jesus actually alludes to this in a parable that he says in chapter 13 about the wheat and the tares and that, you know, he says, you know, don't, you know, they've been mixed together wait till the harvest comes in that you can see for sure what they really are. We're going to harvest and we're going to separate those, those two groups. So um, the 144,000 being God's most holy people, the, they go through the tribulation. They're faithful to God through the hardest tribulation that's ever been on the history of the earth. Like it says in Daniel 12, like in such as a time of trouble, such as never been on the earth. And I mean, you think about the horrible things that have gone on, you know, between the, the um, Inquisition, World War II, you know, all these terrible times and scary things that, you know, have happened there. It's going to be even worse. And these people are faithful to God through it all. And that's what brings about the coming of Christ. So, yes, this 144,000, um, because they are have dedicated themselves fully to Christ, they bring the, the tribulation, they go through it. And once they are done, God says, all right, we they are fully ripe. Let's take them home and let's let's put this world to an end. Let's put this suffering and all this sin business away and just make all things new. So, yes, the 144,000 have a very important role to play in the tribulation. Amen. So, uh, we're almost out of time, but I want to say real quick, uh, hi to Shorty. Says hello to oh. us. Thank you for saying hi. Um, 
Bill, thank you for joining us too. Bill has a quick question that follows on to um, the two witnesses. Um, he asks, when in Revelation um, it mentions a curse on anyone who changes the book, does that mean the one book of Revelation, or is it basically is it talking about the whole book or, or the whole Bible? And I agree, like Revelation twenty two is specifically says um, the words of the prophecy of this book, and I think it's talking about the book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. But I did talk about Deuteronomy four uh, two to three, which um, in that again God says um, you must keep the commandments of God, and um, and you should not add unto the word which I command you. And then God talks about the destruction he brought upon Baal Peor. So the, I think God there too is will say, you know, don't tamper with my book, else you'll have to pay for it later. And, and, and that's means, why the Bible is so well preserved to this day. And that means the entire Bible. Yes. Yeah, I would say it applies to the whole Bible. So Revelation is talking about just about Revelation, but I wouldn't really try tampering with the Bible if I was you. No. And uh, like Jesus says in Matthew 5, 19, you know, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments, like e any, you know, <laughs> spirit of the law, you know, part of the God's word. And his, it says, and shall teach men so he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. Now, that doesn't mean that you're in heaven and you're the least. No, you're not in heaven. And we're thinking, geez, yeah. that is the, the lowest of the low is those who you know, tamper with God's word and say, oh, it's okay to break his law and tell other people it's okay. It's not okay. <laughs> I will never tell you it's okay to break God's law or to, you know, alter his word in any way. So, yeah. in fact, yeah. he says not one jot or one tittle shall pass away. <laughs> until That's comes, right. So. That is absolutely so, right. Thank you for cool. the, the, the follow-up question there, yes. Bill. That's yeah. Great.